Hey guys, so this is going to be the first episode of the surgery mini series that I've been talking about. Um, this first episode is going to be all about uh, what the actual surgery is itself, uh, who I'm going with, all of this. I've covered parts of this in other videos, previous videos before, but I'm going to repeat myself just so it's all in one video for anyone to get in any information that they possibly could want or need. Most of it is based on questions that people have actually asked me, so I'm hoping hoping that it will um, be good and informative with enough questions and answers. First question was, um, which surgeon did you decide on and why? I decided on Dr. Coustal in the south of France, um, mainly because he was one of the cheapest options that I found. I'd also talked to a few people about uh, him, uh, seeing his results and all of this. Uh, he had some really decent results and he also had a really short waiting time. But yeah, he was he was definitely the cheap one of the cheapest options going private. Uh, second question: Why did you decide to go private? I went private because I needed to personally speed up the process of getting top surgery, mainly because my dysphoria was getting way too bad. And if I waited for the NHS, I probably wouldn't be seen for a I don't know a consultation till next. Dece like not this year December, probably next year December, going by NHS waiting times and that would have been a problem because obviously I'm going to university in September and I'm doing such a physical course that I wouldn't be able to get the time off of uni to actually recover from the surgery. When are you having the surgery? Uh, I'm having surgery on the 4th of August this year which is from today it's 41 days I think so it's just a little bit over a month. How much does the surgery cost overall including accommodation and flights? The surgery costs 3,530 euros overall, which before the EU came crashing down with whatever is going on today, with pounds and whatever, um, it was roughly 2,380 pounds in English money. No idea what it is now, hoping it's not much different, but that includes the anaesthetist fees as well as the hospital fees and obviously the surgeon's fees. Um, but the surgeon you have to pay up front and the anaesthetist in hospital you actually have to pay whilst you're over there. Accommodation cost me £65 for 10 nights and flights cost £150 but this was because I'm travelling with other people and the accommodation we've split between four of us in the end. So overall, so far, I will be spending around... I don't know, about £3,050 for all of those bits, and that's excluding food and all of that, but it's still less than what I'd have paid for if I'd have gone private over here in England, because that's about double that. How are you affording this surgery? I first had trouble finding ways to afford it, actually, because um, I'm not in a full-time job. Even though I'm 21, I'm in a part-time job, and they don't allow you to take out a loan if you are in a part-time job, which really sucks. So I couldn't personally get the loan out, so my mum had to take it out, and I'm paying her back, which it, it works for us. It's, it's decent enough. I've been saving like crazy so that I can actually have some extra money on the side. And I did set up a GoFundMe at first because I was really worried that I wasn't actually going to make the money in time because of being denied the loan the first time. But um, that didn't get anywhere anyway, so I've just been trying to save and save and save and doing jobs here and there. Washing cars and stuff like that to try and earn a little bit of extra money. What kind of top surgery are you having? Uh, I'm having, I think they call it, like the full term is double incision mastectomy with nipple grafts or something like that. Or nipple and... A areola, I don't know how to say it, which is basically where they just slice it off, take out all the tissue and then stitch it back up and then stick the nipple back on, I think, obviously with a bit more, a bit more to it than that, that's, that's quite gross when you think about it. Are you having drains inserted? Um, with this surgeon, he doesn't seem to use drains. Uh, that actually worries me a little bit because most surgeons do use them because it helps to stop the build-up of fluid in the chest. So this means I'm going to have to be extra careful with wearing my post-op binder. I've got to keep it nice and tight to avoid the fluid build-up, which can cause complications if I let the fluid build up. No, I'm not having drains inserted. What kind of risks are there to this surgery? Like any form of major surgery, or even minor surgery, there, there are many risks. This is major surgery, it's classed as major surgery, and so the most common ones tend to be infections or accidentally ripping out the stitches. 
other risks for this certain surgery can be the nipples being rejected and falling off or the scarring not scarring correctly or you can actually damage your chest permanently if you overdo things at the start instead of letting yourself actually recover i don't think there's any other risks apart from i mean obviously there's the nasty risks such as death and all of that but that comes with everything even probably taking a couple of paracetamol um how long will you be in hospital i think i've got to be at the hospital for 7 a.m on the 4th of august and I think it's a whole day thing, I stay in overnight and then I'm discharged the next morning I suppose, or midday or something. And hopefully there shouldn't be a reason for me to stay any longer than that. What kind of aftercare do you get? In all honesty I'm not actually positive on this answer. I know that I go away with painkillers, but other than that I'm not all that sure if he provides me with bandages and stuff like that, so I should probably actually check that out. Thank you for that question, because... It's given me something to ask him. I will have my post-op appointment though, just to check that things are running smoothly before I come back to England, so I think if something were wrong he'd help me get it sorted then. But otherwise I don't actually know all that much about aftercare abroad. Are you taking anyone with you and why did you choose them? Uh, I'm taking my best friend Lisa um, with me, as I did have other plans to take someone else, but that sort of fell down a big old hole so I had to find someone else and Lisa has stepped up to well basically stepped up to the task to be in my carer. It also means she gets a mini holiday away from her hectic life and this crazy country. Uh, I chose to take her because she knows how to look after me. Um, she is truly a best friend she knows how to deal with my depression and get me up and get me going and I know that if I'm lying in bed moping in pain I'm probably going to get into one of my depressive states and I know that Lisa will literally just get me up and make me get on with it, which is which is a good thing. Most importantly, are you looking forward to it? Yes. All of the yes. It's all I think about pretty much night and day and I keep forgetting to count down the days because I'm that excited because I get too distracted thinking about it, if that makes sense. I always forget how many days left it is. I forgot to mention that I'm actually going with two other people in the... Who am I taking with it? Um, which is Elliot and his friend Gina. Elliot's basically the one that keeps telling me how many days we've got left because we're having surgery on the same day, which is really cool because it means I've got a surgery buddy. Um, and we're all going together, so that's kind of cool. But he's the one that keeps saying, oh my god, we've got this many days. And, we're getting, and I'm like, oh my god, do, do we actually? That's that's crazy, that's like no time at all. So yeah, I am, I am really excited. Um, from today it is 41 days, which is so close. Yeah, I think I think you can see that I'm excited. Oh, I've got one more question come through. Um, what are you looking forward to most? Guessing you mean after I've had top surgery. Uh, what am I looking forward to most? Being able to be happy with my body, being able to look in the mirror and and be topless. I could walk around outside and get a tan all over my top half of my body, which would be brilliant, instead of just my neck and my arms and then have this massive white patch in the middle. Going to the beach, I love going to the beach. I love going swimming, all of that. And I hate that I have to always wear a t-shirt especially when I'm in the water because it always feels like it's dragging me down and all of this and it'd be nice just to not have to worry about that at all. I think it would be absolutely amazing. So yeah, I think that is everything on this topic. If there are any more questions and don't hesitate to ask, I can I can always add them into the end of another episode or something. Uh, or you can get hold of me on Tumblr or my Facebook or comment on the video. Uh, it's up to you. I'm here, I'm easy to talk to, whatever, so don't hesitate to ask, and until the next episode.